everybody. We are super excited to be here with you today with my dear brother Warren. The Lord has provided us the opportunity to share his word with you all tonight, and we're really excited about it yes. because it's one of our most favorite things to do. We've been called to it. We are absolutely ministers of the gospel of Christ and ministers of reconciliation. Yes. And so we're looking forward to sharing with you tonight. And we got to absolutely start this time off with prayer. We want God to lead and guide every moment, every second, every breath, decision, thought, everything. Every word that comes out, we want it to bring him glory. Mm -hmm. So let's let's go to the Lord and uh, ask that he would lead and guide tonight. Lord God, we just humbly come before you this evening. I'm so thankful to be able to share this message side by side with my dear brother Warren. As we get into your word tonight, God, we're asking you to impact our hearts and our minds. Mm -hmm. And for everybody that shows up, that you would do the same thing, Father, that you would restore all the things that have been broken, that you would reconcile that you would mend as we get into these moments and share about humility and what that looks like in your word. God, that you would just continue to keep us at your feet. You are the one that sits on the throne of unmerited favor, the God of all creation. And we always want to be those who are humbly before you, Father, because I know me and my brother, we've experienced humbling. We desire that for nobody. And we desire to be, be humble, those who are willingly humble throughout the rest of this physical life mm -hmm. as we look to you for eternity. God, we trust you, we love you, and you praise you. And we ask these things in your son Jesus Christ's precious name. Lead and guide tonight for your glory, God. Amen. 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 All right, there's four reasons that we usually go over in a big group, and we'll do it tonight. First reason that... Um, it's a safe place as we get it. We've all come from addiction. Uh, both Matt and I have walked a road of addiction mm -hmm. of, in one way or the other, and we've been set free in that, and we're walking in victory. But we get it. Leadership in any most excellent way um, that we know of is walking in victory. And we can't even be on leadership mm -hmm. until we've been checked out for over a year and walking in that victory so um, that's one reason the second reason is there's thousands of people praying for us mm -hmm. Salem Heights is now taken over the national uh, most excellent way and so we can honestly say that there's thousands all over the world praying for you tonight mm -hmm. and that is just wonderful to know uh, third reason is we get it I mean we get into God's word, and that is the most important out of all of it is, it's not my opinion, it's not Matt's mm -hmm. or anybody else's, it's what the word of God says. So when we, uh, when we crack open the word of God, that is truth, and that's what we go by. Mm -hmm. And it's important because if it's, if it's Matt or I or anybody else giving our opinion, we're gonna let you down, it's gonna fail, and it's gonna run aground where the Word of God will never do that. It will come back with what it was set out to do in each and every one of our lives. So you can, you can trust that and you can believe it. And the last reason is what says here, what's said here stays here. We, as leadership at Salem Heights, we take this serious. What's said in group is very important and it needs to be kept in group. Now, if we have something that we need to work through with you, we'll, we'll pull you aside and we'll do that. But what, what is said here stays here. And we ask that people that show up on a Monday night or Tuesday night, that they respect that and do the same. So, you know, if they have something they want to say to us in private, we're going to keep it private. So you can, you can guarantee that this is a safe place. Now, with the Internet, uh, we, if you have something private that you want to discuss, we ask that you don't put it on right now, mm -hmm. that you uh, message us privately and we'll get back to that and somebody will answer those questions with you, pray with you. Uh, that's the wonderful thing about the internet is you can reach out and we can reach back mm -hmm. and we'd love to do that with you. So that's the four reasons why it's a safe place mm -hmm. and it's important. Yeah, and I love how Warren too, when he's talking about the word of God, we're going to focus on the Word of God, and it's so important for us to always share this. 
that if there's anything that ever comes out of our mouths that doesn't line up with the word, whatever mm -hmm. came out of our mouths was out of line, folks. Yep. Because God's word has no errors, no flaw. It's inerrant. It's infallible. So we want to encourage you with everything that gets shared tonight that you would be like the Bereans and go back to the word of God yes. and check it. Be children of the word. Be people of the word. Get in it. It's it's uh, you, if you're in if you're in the word every day, it's absolutely going to change your life. God is going to renew your mind, mm -hmm. and um, it's amazing. Ask Him to do it; He will answer, and the answer will be yes. Let this mind be in us that was first in Your Son, which absolutely. is we're getting ready to share that. Yes. Sorry, I'm cleaning my goggles here. Should mm -hmm. we read this now? Yeah. All right. Glenn and Judy Wright laid this out for us as an opening statement. They were the ones that started the most excellent way in 1986, and so we've adapted this. The most excellent way is love, according to 1 Corinthians 12, 31, and 13, 3 through 8. The most excellent way is a loving group of men and women affected directly or indirectly by drugs, alcohol, or other life-dominating sin. We utilize biblical principles to overcome the guilt, frustration, hopelessness, fear, and shame associated with addiction, addictive behavior, remembering the admonish of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Beware lest anyone take you captive through, what's that? Philosophy and empty deceit. Yeah. According to the tra traditions of man, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according mm -hmm. to Christ. Colossians 2 8. Mm -hmm. We believe a person can become totally free from, from addictive and compulsive behavior only by the power of the indwelling Spirit of Christ Jesus. The most excellent way is to be recognized to God, the or reconciled to God, the Father, through belief in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We believe that through meetings such as this, we will grow in our faith in Christ. We will become healthy, joy-filled, and productive children of God with the support of others who understand what we have lived through and by applying biblical principles to our lives. Mm -hmm. We gain a better understanding of the sin nature and how to change our attitude and behavior. The most excellent way is a personal relationship with Jesus. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That's part of John 10.10. 10. Mm. <clears throat> and, and I love this scripture that Warren said because that's one of the scriptures that I love to go to mm. all the time. The one in Colossians when it talks about let no one take you captive through empty philosophy, through philosophy and empty deception. In one verse of scripture there is more value than all the philosophy and all the literature that has or ever will be written God's word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to pierce through the very soul and spirit, able to do precise surgery in exactly where it needs to be done. And what this is talking about, folks, is this is the basic principles. The elementary principles of people and the world is to deceive. Mm -hmm. This is not higher learning, folks. This is preschool. And so, which is the total opposite of what's going to be shared tonight. Yes. Tonight, the truth is going to be shared because it's going to be right from God's word. And that, being able, that, that, that scripture creates, um, uh, you know, things stirring up in me because it is. <laughs> yeah. And God came to, uh, um, you know, bring truth. He sent his son. And so that's what we're going to do tonight is share truth Absolutely. and the hope that will never disappoint which it talks about coming to know Christ is to know the hope that will never disappoint. Yes, absolutely. So then we get into this wonderful packet here of the Beatitudes. This is the 10 er, attitudes of victorious living. Um, it starts out with a verse right at the top and it's Philippians 2.5. Mm -hmm. It says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And isn't that what we're looking for now today? Yeah, I know that's. I know that I needed a new way of thinking because I continued to rely upon my thinking. Mm -hmm. I continued to trust in myself, <clears throat> and I produced the results of what I was thinking and trusting in myself, which was 
the drug world. Yes. You know, every form of addiction uh, with mind-altering substances that you can possibly think of. Um, it was all terrible, and I absolutely needed a new way of thinking, and I begged God, I need you to do it, God. I need you to cause my mind to function the way you intended it to. And I turned that scripture, I know I share it, I'm never to stop sharing it, into a prayer. God, let this heart and mind yes. be in me, which was first in your son. Absolutely. And he will always say yes to that, to that prayer, folks. Um, that's one that will always bring him honor and glory. And, um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, we usually, in the big group, read through these. <clears throat> <clears throat> as we will tonight. Mm -hmm. You want me to read the first five and yeah. then you take over? Awesome. So number one is humility. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 3. I admit I am powerless of the effects of drug, alcohol, and self-centered behavior. My life is unmanageable. And that will be the one that we're looking at tonight. Repentant. <clears throat> Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. I believe believe Jesus Christ can and will create in me a new way of life. Number three is submissive. Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, Matthew 5, 5. I give my will and my life to Jesus Christ. Number four, honesty. Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I honestly examined myself in the light of God's word. That was Matthew 5, 6. Merciful, Jesus said. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 5, 7. I humbly ask God's forgiveness for my sinful past. I am able to forgive those who have hurt me. Yeah. Number six is obedient. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Matthew 5, 8. I desire to live under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit day by day. Seven is reconciliation. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Matthew 5, 9. I ask forgiveness from all those I have hurt or dealt with unfairly. Number eight is faith. Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 10. I trust in the power of Jesus Christ when I face hardships and trials. Number nine is perseverance. Jesus said, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Matthew 5, 11 through 12. I stand firm in my faith that Jesus is in control of all things. And number 10, loving servant. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven, Matthew 5, 13 through 16. As a new creation in Christ, I share with others the good news of a risen Savior who makes his people whole. And what I love about that moment right there <coughs> is it seems, and I'll remove the word seems here in a bit, it absolutely is the perfect time to share with you all the good news of our risen Savior absolutely. who makes his people whole, which is what? The good news of Jesus Christ. Right. His death, burial, and resurrection, he absolutely lived he lived a perfect life, a sinless life. He went to the cross on our behalf, suffered on our behalf. He then commended his spirit to God the Father. He rose on the third day to then have power over sin and death. We're going to talk yes. about that tonight. He did it all on our behalf. He did it while we were his enemy. He did it while we were unable to help ourselves. And at just the right moment, God sent his son to pay a price that we could have never paid and it was when we were across the battlefield, positioned in opposition as enemies against the God of all creation. And he loved us so much. How do we know that? The gospel. God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his one and only son, his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him shall not, should not pa perish, but have everlasting life. And what does Romans say? Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. And I love this portion and you will be saved. You know what it doesn't say? And you <clears throat> might be, or maybe could be. It says you will be saved. And Jesus says some beautiful things in John 14. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, and he is the only way to God the Father. There is only one name under heaven by which anybody can be saved. Yep. Jesus Christ. 
belief on his death, burial, and resurrection. Believe. Simply believe. People have been stumbling over the simplicity and the beauty of the gospel for centuries. It's simply believe. It's not about me. Get, give me a couple weeks. Let me get this figured out. i got to yeah, clean myself. No, no. You know how many times I said that? <laughs> and you know how many times it happened? It happened zero times. God met me on the street with a needle in my arm, kicking somebody's head in. Yep. And he didn't want me to do any of that stuff. But he met me right there, and he saved me through faith. Belief on the gospel. That's it. That simple. Just believe. In, a, in, in my room with Pastor Matt, he shared the gospel. I'm in the midst of planning the murder of an individual. And God gave me the ability to believe, and he intercede, interceded. And ultimately, my plans uh, were thwarted by the God of all creation. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Mm, Society absolutely. is thankful. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that man is yes. thankful. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <clears throat> So there you have it, the gospel. That is the key point to all of this. We can't pull any of this off without it. Mm-hmm. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Mm-hmm. But we read another piece of scripture mm-hmm. that is very key to that as well. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna see the gospel in the midst of it as well. It's Titus 3, 3 through 8. Let me read that for you. It says, for we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, Mm -hmm. living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards man appeared, he saved us, not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, Mm -hmm. he saved us through the washing and regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. whom he poured out on us abundantly through Christ, Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by His grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want to affirm constantly, that those who believe in God should be careful to maintain good works. Mm -hmm. These things are good and profitable to man. There you have it. You've seen it, the gospel right in the midst of it. Mm-hmm. But normally yeah. in our big group, what do we ask about that? Yeah, so we would love to, I mean, and if you've got it, and, and if you're taking it in, if you got your Bible out to Titus, in 30 seconds or less, we would love to hear you say what's impacting you in that. Mm-hmm. We give everybody the opportunity, which portion of those Titus verses is impacting you? And I know for me, um, I just want to reread all of it. <laughs> Yeah. And work through it, you know, it's by, by grace, by God's unmerited favor that I've been saved, and that not of myself, mm-hmm. never earned, can never be earned. Salvation is a free gift, and that's why it's called grace. Grace yes. means unmerited. It's unearnable. And mercy, I mean, God given me what I don't deserve. He, he saved me while I was all the above mentioned things, my malicious evil intentions, mm-hmm. while I was serving various lusts and pleasures. While I was absolutely being a fool, um, that, that, that defined a good significant portion of my life uh, because I was the one that was in control. And apart from him, I can do nothing. I produced it. Um, I lived it out. And uh, in the midst of all of it, you know, uh, but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward Matt, toward Warren, yes. and insert your own name, everybody that's showing up here, yes. Eric, you know, uh, Jeff, Randy, and Don, Crystal, everybody that's showing up here, yes. insert your own name, make it personal because it absolutely is. Judith, Sayo, everybody that's coming through tonight, Jerry, mm-hmm. insert your own name there. And God saved us by faith, right? And that's how he saves us is through faith and belief in his son. And it was while we were all those things, which is amazing to me, that while I was in the midst of all the wreckage, all the dope, all the violence, We'll talk about that when we introduce ourselves. Yes. Um, he had precious thoughts towards us mm-hmm. that were more than the count of the sand. That's unfathomable to me. Yeah. Precious thought. I, I, there, precious wasn't a word that I would have described um, or thought that anybody had anything in reference to uh, precious thinking right. uh, towards me. So amazing. Selfish, self centered. Mm-hmm. That was me. All of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah wow. which means that we're going to hurt people. Because right. selfish people hurt people. I yep. produced it. We lived it out. and uh, But through Christ, I mean, because it is. Like, past tense, 
You know, salvation. That's right. Future. That's it. And it's the hope that will never disappoint. Never disappoint. The moment of salvation, God's promise, he will accomplish the work that he started. We are then described as heirs and those who are justified, made right with God. That's it. Through, and how does that happen? It's only through faith and yeah. belief on the gospel. It's There's the only way. nothing we could do to do that. No. It, no. If, if anything, we bring uh, total destruction to ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, I always look at the, the scripture as he was only eight people away from wiping out the whole world. But yet mm -hmm. he loved mm -hmm. us so much mm -hmm. that he didn't even do a thing. Yeah. He says, I want you. Man, that is wonderful. And the thing I love about this myself is it's not about good works. Mm -hmm. It's nothing mm -hmm. that we could do, as Matt yeah. said. He gives us the Holy Spirit. When you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, he implants the Holy Spirit in you. And now it's up to you to allow the Holy Spirit to mm -hmm. run in your life without any reservation. Or what we say, you can quench the Spirit. Say, mm, no. See, God wants all of you. Every bit of it. And we're going to look at that tonight. Yeah. He's going to use the term dead. When something is dead, it's no longer living, and it will not live again. It mm -hmm. is dead. So, so we can keep moving. If you can memorize this, what do we do? Yeah, so there is a challenge that if you're able to memorize the Titus 3338 portion of Scripture, it doesn't have to be verbatim, which means it doesn't have to be word for word. It's got to be close. There's a $25 gift certificate for you for the best little roadhouse, and um, which, you know, we love being able to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. give those out because why would we want to encourage anybody to memorize scripture? Well, we have a perfect example in our Savior that when he <coughs> was led into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, what did he do? What did the Son of God do? He quoted scripture. Yes. He, he, he responded with scripture in the midst of the temptations, right? And so we have a perfect example, and God promises he will bring back to remembrance his word. And so being in his word, meditating on it night and day, um, and, and, and working at memorizing it, 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 it in, in those moments during the day, yes. recalling scripture to mind in the midst of a trial, a temptation, or in the midst of an amazingly super blessed day, which every day really is yeah. through Christ, um, even in the hard stuff, right? Peace and joy that life circumstances don't determine what we have because it comes from Him. That's it. So yeah, that's why we would want to encourage you to memorize Scripture. And, it, and it's a very important because you're going to be tempted, you're going to be tried mm -hmm. all through life until He takes you home. Yeah. Or He returns. And so mm -hmm. for me, it's like, we need that ammunition. You know, here's the plug for the Bible. If you don't have one, we'll get you one. Yes. But like he said, you got to be in the Word of God every day. And it it will not come back void. So even if you read it and you think, man, I didn't get nothing out of it. God's Word is still working in you. Mm -hmm. Keep reading it. Yes. Keep applying it. Keep living it out daily. It's it's important. You know, when I read Titus 3 through 2, 8, I think about, thy word have I hidden my in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Yeah. You know, it's it's an important piece of scripture. If you're hiding it in your heart, mm -hmm. it's there for a reason. It's there just like he said, like Matt said, Christ gave back scripture to the devil. That's what we're supposed to give back. Not our thoughts or our opinions or any of that. Mm -hmm. But there it is. You get a free steak or salad, whatever floats your cookie. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the scripture doesn't leave you it's in there and it will come back to remembrance when it's needed mm -hmm. and if you're continually in it think mm -hmm. about it if you're always feeding out of the word <laughs> you're never going to forget it yeah especially if you read scripture over and over and over again that's what i love about hebrews 4 it's alive and active and sharper than mm -hmm. a two-edged sword it's yeah. there all the time and yeah. we both can confess to this you read a piece of scripture and you say, wow, I got a lot out of that. Mm -hmm. And later, go back, say, a year, and you read it, and it's like, wow, I got something more out of it. And it was just a little bit more than what you got the first time. So it's wonderful. So to keep mm -hmm. moving on here, we get to introduce ourselves. You want to go first? Yeah. You want me to go first? Oh, either way. Go, no, go, go. Yeah, Rock, me. paper, scissors. I get hit, 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 <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I'm, I'm Matthew Massara. 
God ultimately rescued me from myself. Um, I was self-willed, uh, self-motivated, self-focused, self-selfish, um, which was all I was capable of outside of the Lord. I operated in the drug world for 27 years, um, acquired 14 knife wounds, a couple of gunshot wounds, and, and a bunch of that was me feeding those addictions. I was addicted to the mind-altering substances, uh, the power, the violence, everything that went mm -hmm. with it, and everything led me to a place of losing everything, folks. I was sleeping in bushes and bus stops. I was exposed to the elements, um, which caused my feet to start to rot off my body. Um, and I know that's really, that can be really hard to hear. That's just the truth of how it was. Um, sin was producing in me. Um, I was producing the results of sin. Um, and outside of God interceding, it was going to lead to my physical death. Um, and uh, as I think about that, you know, uh, having to scrape that dead tissue off my feet so that my feet wouldn't get gangrenous. And, um, you know, it was uh, all for me self-inflicted. And uh, but today the Lord lets me be a part of what he's doing. I'm in full time ministry. Mm -hmm. I get to share the gospel every day. I was all about get to's before I get to be a fool. I get to do a bunch of dope. I get to put needles in my body. I get to be violent. But today it's all about I get to share the good news of our risen yes. savior. The Lord lets me utilize the gift of evangelism. It's, it's good. So it's his. I'm mm -hmm. thankful that he's letting me use it while I'm here. And I will until I no longer have any life left in this body by the strength and power that he provides me. I'm never trying to produce that within myself. I did that for long enough. And so every day I get to share the good news of our risen Savior and there's just people, oh, that's what I get to do. Man, that's New life. New wonderful. Creation. Hmm. My name is Warren Lund. I, uh, I used to judge guys like him that I was better than they were because they were stuck in their sin. And I came to learn as I tried to control things that I fell into sin as well. Led me into drinking, led me into living in my car. But yet I was so prideful, I'd still judge him. Not him personally, but his kind at that time. Hmm. And it was, it was sad because I grew up in a Christian home. I was being taught the word of God, but the one thing I would not do is I wouldn't stay here. I wouldn't get into the word daily. I wouldn't get into the word for self-examination. I'd get into the word only a short time so that I had more ammunition to judge the other people. But it took God breaking me and showing me that I was not in control. In 1991, I remember asking the question in my apartment, there's got to be more to this God than this. Mm. I knew about hellfire and brimstone, but I couldn't tell you about God's mercy and grace. Mm. And that's what we're gonna look at tonight too. And it's, it just, it blows my mind how much he cared for me while I was yet sinning, running around thinking I had it all figured out. And I was doing it in his name, false, religion it came to a point where I thought I could lose my salvation and you know the one thing that really really frustrated me was I sought counsel here in 2014 and my counselor says in your own words why don't you share the gospel to me hmm. and I couldn't do it hmm. but praise God I'm not that man anymore hmm. I know the gospel you just shared a wonderful uh, line of the gospel right there. There's no other way up under heaven in which you can be saved but through Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know, I walk with that. And I, like Matt says, we get to do that mm -hmm. now. We get to be a part of God's work. He lets us do that. And mm -hmm. now I share Christ. I, I love saying I'm looking for a bridge to go from physical to spiritual all the time. Mm -hmm. I want to know where your walk is with the Lord. And even tonight, mm -hmm. even right now, where is your walk with the Lord? If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, what we're about to talk about, you won't be able to pull off. 
So we got to get that nailed down first. Maybe you're coming, you're chiming in tonight, and you've got hidden sin. And you're saying, well, I hear what you're saying, but, you know, will God really forgive me? Yes, he will. Mm -hmm. He wants to forgive you. He's waiting for you to repent. Mm -hmm. Today is the day of salvation, and today is the day of repentance. Yeah. He wants you to walk right before him. Can you do it? Will you do it? So, that's what's brought us to today. Yeah, it, God. it's awesome. It's amazing. And we're super thankful that you're all here with us. We want to try to say hello to all of you as you come through. Larry, we are super glad uh, that you're here tonight. And we look forward to sharing yes. uh, these moments with you going forward, too. And Lena, Timothy, Marcus, <laughs> super thankful for you all. We love you all. And we're thankful to be able to share these moments with you tonight as we get into God's word. And you know, you mentioned thankfulness. Yeah. You know, yeah. that is key to our walking right before God. It's it's a form of worship. Absolutely. We're going to give, I mean, and it's awesome. Like a super, super good segue as Warren brings that up. Because we're thankful for those of you that are here for the first time. Larry. Yes. Um, you know, uh, we're thankful. And on the back of this token. It says we love because he first loved us. Yeah, and it's it's that unconditional love that is without expectation. Yes. You know, that God is the only one that can produce within us, right? Um, it's the same love that we know from him through his son, Jesus Christ. And so if this is your first night with us, we are super thankful yes. and excited that you're here with us. So we're praising God for that. And we will get you a token, mm -hmm. even with you checking in online for your first visit we'll give you that and we also uh we like to celebrate victories yeah. because that's what they are yeah. as christ brings them to your mind and you know that they're a, an addiction or a struggle in your life and you surrender them to christ we you know that might be moment for my moment hour by hour day by day week by week mm -hmm. but as you continue to do that mm -hmm. pretty soon it builds what a legacy mm -hmm. You know, it builds long term. Mm -hmm. So if any of you, you know, we pass out these tokens for 30 days, mm -hmm. 90 or 60 days, 90 days, six months, nine months, a year. Man, just let us know and we'll get you your token. Mm -hmm. We, you know, I'll tell you this right now. This is nothing but a little plastic piece of plastic with a verse on it. So that's a good thing. And a metal ring. It won't stop you from sinning. It won't keep you from your addiction. But what it will do is when you look at that and say, you know, I'm thankful that the Lord has mm -hmm. given me 30 days clean, yeah. 60 days, 90 days. And pretty soon we get to a year or mm -hmm. multiple years. Man, this, yeah. we customize these for you. If yeah. you've got multiple years, we will write on there with what they call a permanent bell pen. Yeah, we, we will do it. That's right. Yeah. No holds barred. Yeah. Man, that is wonderful when you're coming in with two, three, four, five years of victory. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's where the thanks goes. And if you got one day, we're thankful for that. Absolutely. So please share here on the message board. If you're if you got thirty days of victory, if you got sixty days, if you got ninety days, if you got six months, if you got nine months or a year, or as Warren said, multiple years, please share with us. Uh, because we want we want to thank the Lord because that's amazing every moment every second every breath uh, you know every victory is uh, is possible in and through our Savior Jesus Christ and thanking the Lord yeah. is worship yes it is so you know and we are all called to worship him mm -hmm. so continue to do that what are you thankful for write it down we challenge people all the time. Get a pencil and paper out and start writing down what you're thankful for. They can be as simple as, I didn't curse today, or I didn't flip somebody off, or I didn't do what I was used to be addicted to. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's, thank you, Lord, for just giving, giving me life, breath. Yeah. You know, because apart from God, we can do nothing. Think about it. Your breath, your heartbeat that you feel in your chest, that's given from God. So don't take it for granted. Yeah. So, man, we can carry on all night about that, but we yes. got some word to give. Yeah. Right straight from the word of God. If you were in big group, we'd pass it out like this. 
you've shared it, haven't you? Or somebody has. Mm -hmm. Tonight's attitude of victorious living, like I said earlier, was humility. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Matthew 5, 3. I admit I am powerless over the effects of drugs, alcohol, and self-centered behavior. My life is unmanageable. Mm -hmm. You're called, you choose. If you commit, you will change. Mm -hmm. And faith in God's promises produces power. Yep. Man, that is so true. Yep. So our first piece of scripture is Romans 6, 6 through 22. Yeah. You want to start us off there? Oh, yeah. When you run out of air, I'll pick it up. Awesome. That sounds great. So Romans 6, 6, 22. We know that our old life was put to death on the cross with Christ. This happened so that our sinful selves would have no power over us. Then we would not be slaves to sin. Anyone who has died is made free from sin's control. If we died with Christ, we know that we will also live with him. Mm. Christ was raised from death, and we know that he cannot die again. Death has no power over him now. Yes, when Christ died, he died to defeat the power of sin one time enough for all. He now has a new life, and his new life is with God. In the same way, you should see yourselves as being dead to the power of sin and alive for God through Jesus Christ. But don't let sin control your life here on earth. You must not be ruled by the things your sinful self makes you want to do. Don't offer the parts of your body to serve sin. Don't use your bodies to do evil. But offer yourselves to God as people who have died and now live. Offer the parts of your body to God to be used for doing good. Sin will not be your master because you are not under law. You now live under God's grace. Surely you know that you become the slaves of whatever you give yourselves to. Anything or anyone you follow will be your master. Think about that for a minute. You can follow sin or you can obey God. Following sin brings spiritual death. But obeying God makes you right with him. In the past, you were slaves to sin. Sin controlled you. But thank God, you fully obeyed what you were taught. You were made free from sin. And now you are slaves to what is right. In the past, you were slaves to sin. And you did not even think about doing right. You did evil things, and now you are ashamed of them, what you did. Did those things help you? No. They only brought death. But now you are free from sin. You have become slaves of God, and the result is that you live only for God. This will bring you eternal life. Mm. So in big group, at this point, we'd, we'd ask a simple question. What stands out to you? On this, as we read it, you know, what just says, oh, man, I didn't know that before, or, wow, that hurts. Because believe me, when I first came here, some of this hurt. Mm -hmm. And I had to do some business with God because, see, humility is the opposite of what? Pride. Pride, yeah. Pride mm -hmm. will always dictate and determine the fall, folks. Lived it out. Absolutely. Took more than enough experiential knowledge that I don't encourage anybody to ever gain or gather. Mm. And one of the things Pastor Matt, our leader of men's ministries here, Pastor, would always say is, in the middle of pride is I. And isn't that true? That's where we usually find ourselves, mm -hmm. right in the middle of pride. Mm -hmm. But if you remove that I and put it where it belongs, in the middle of mm -hmm. him, get this right, mm -hmm. then this will start taking care of it by itself. Mm -hmm. Because God's now in control of it, not us. So, what stood out to you in this scripture? Oh, yeah, so much, right? So, mm. in 9, Christ was raised from death, and we know yes. that he cannot die again. Death has no power over him now. Yes, when Christ died, he died to defeat the power of sin one time, enough for all time. When on the cross, our Savior cried out, it is finished. On the third day, when he rose from the dead, when God rose his son from the dead, he absolutely had power over sin and death. And the, it was completed. It was It was finished. complete. When he said it is finished, he meant it. It wasn't partially done. It was no layaway. It wasn't a down payment, folks. 
it was the full payment and it was complete and I love that that that's that's that absolutely impacts me there's so much in here oh yeah um, that that impacts me and he now has a new life and his new life is with God and in the same way you should see yourselves as being dead to the power of sin mm -hmm. and alive through God for God through Christ Jesus so God sees us now through faith in his son Jesus Christ his death burial and resurrection for the forgiveness of all our sins as if we've never sinned yes he sees us as if we've never sinned you know we do and then we go to the throne room of grace and he still sees us through the lenses of his son Jesus Christ right as those who have overwhelmingly conquered as those who are victorious as those who are his righteous ones our righteousness mm -hmm. is from our Savior Jesus Christ he wow. imputed it on us yes this is the only way it was gonna happen folks you know, and I love it because, I mean, you hit a lot of what I was just saying in my little testimony is there was a lot of it that I used, to, you know, the Bible against people, and yet I hadn't grabbed hold of that truth that it was done once for all time. Mm -hmm. You can't lose it, guys. If you place your yeah, faith in Jesus Christ, it's eternal. Yeah. Join heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. Join heirs means we get everything Christ gets except for one thing, and that is the throne that's seated right next to the God the Father. Yeah, and he never says, so in the midst of salvation, we, we've been saved, right? Yep. If I say no to him and yes to me, I did that for about a decade, folks. Mm. I was saved, and you know what God never did? You've just sinned too much. I'm mm. taking my promise from you. He never did that. Nope. Because the work that our Savior did was completed. Um, it was completed. Complete victory has been given. That's it, once for all time. And and because it, it, and I'm super thankful. It's not about us keeping. That's right. Because then it would not be grace, unmerited favor. It would be something that has to be earned, earned or works, something that yeah. has to be kept. Because yep. then it's by works, which is not the case. That's why it's called grace. So, does that mean I get to sin and just ask God for forgiveness oh, every time? May it never be so. May it never be so. And if you go to Romans 6, that's how this starts. Yeah. We we yeah. fall in love with our Savior now. So much. And, and we fall in love with Him so much that we don't want to sin anymore. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. sin that you get into, it's... It's, oh, I found myself in sin now. It's not willfully running to those things anymore that used to drive us, that we used to be in control of. Yep. And so, yeah, go for it. Like, Kylie, you're saying that. I, I did the same thing. I went, except, praise God, that, you know, uh, you know, he, he's, he's always there for us, right? But I, I went back for, like, 14,000 more needles mm. over about a decade and God never left me nor forsook me. No. And he was always right there for me. I was running, and he was always there. Just right there. That's it. I was going this way, and he was saying, but you're my son, and you're in, you, you, you're in my hands, and, and I'm not letting you go. I am going. He brought me to right conclusions, and I praise God there, for that. There it is. And he will do that. And he says he'll never leave us or forsake and us. And that's why I prayed about those yes. moments of humbling. I received it. I'm, I praise God that he loved me enough, and that I had brothers that cared for me enough, that had those hard conversations with me. They were not smooth jazz 103 conversations. No. They were right out of the word. They were shared with truth in love and uh, I just praise God for those moments and then you know because the opposite of humble is, is humble yeah. humility right. and so yeah. and you know one thing we say in most excellent way quite often when we're talking about humility or humble you can humble yourself before God mm -hmm. or you can be humbled before God there's consequences mm -hmm. if you humble yourself before God you are going to receive his blessings mm -hmm. but if he has to humble you there's consequences it, in that. It hurts. I felt it hurt. that. I, but today, I'm in the path of obedience. And it was like, we don't... And it, it, this is all going to come to one of the other things that really impacted me in, in reference to shame, like walking oh, in shame. Yes. Um, you know, when it says this, it, down at the bottom, you did evil things, and now you're ashamed mm. of what you did. 
I should be ashamed of everything that I did that Jesus Christ had to pay the price on the cross for. The amazing thing about that is, is I don't have to walk in that shame no. because I've been given complete victory That's right. in and through our Savior, Jesus Christ. It was for all time. It, he, it was a full payment, propitiation, right? And so it was God helping me through his word and through spirit-led believers learning how to live and walk in the complete victory that I'd already been given through our Savior Jesus Christ. It had already been given. I went back and picked up the shackles and, and, and clasped them around my wrists and my ankles. It was self-inflicted. Yeah. I had already been given complete victory. I wasn't walking in it. But praise God, he promises he will accomplish the yeah. work that he started. I no longer live in light of the shame that I absolutely did walk in yes. when I was saying no to him and yes to me. We get to lay that shame and that guilt at his feet, knowing that when we ask him, we are absolutely forgiven, and um, which is amazing, you know. And the forgiveness is always in place. You know, and, and that is so true. We can, we can wallow in our shame, mm. but yet he's standing there. Never leave us or forsake us. I brought that up. He's waiting for us to just mm -hmm. repent. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, I'm turning from this, and I'm, I'm turning towards you. Because if we're turning away from sin or anything, you're going to something else. And what we're giving you tonight is scripture. And what Christ is saying through his word is turn from those ways. It's been paid for, but turn to me. Run to me. Accept my word as true and start living it out. Yeah. You know, I love this piece of scripture because yeah. he says a bunch of don'ts now. Yes. In, in, uh, it Love starts about 11. We'll, we'll pick it up there. It says, in the same way, you should see yourselves as being dead to the power of sin and alive through Christ Jesus. I just got to stop there for a minute. When mm -hmm. something is dead, it's no longer living, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah. dead. Take this carnal body. If it was to fall over right now dead, God willed it dead. It's done. There's nothing you could do to bring me back to life. But when we consider ourselves dead to the sin that we walked in, mm -hmm. one thing that really shook my boat is why do I keep reaching back to that dead carcass, just picture it as this flesh, and trying to give it CPR when I know that everything that that had to do with brought forth pain and agony and hurt and shame. Why would I want to bring that back? Mm -hmm. When Christ says, I've set you free from that, now you're walking in my spirit, which is the spirit of the living God that raised him from the dead. Why would you want that? You know, for me, I had to grab hold of that because I kept trying to bring that carcass along mm. every time yeah. I turned the corner. Mm. Oh, woe is me. Dragging the corpse. Yeah. I did it for a really long time, too. Yeah. And your arm yeah. got tired, didn't it? It really tired. Both Ooh. of them. I had to switch every once yeah. in a while. Yeah. And he says, so here, when you place your faith in Christ, you're not just, okay, you're free to go. Yeah. He says, no, now let's look at a few things. He says, mm. right after that in verse 12, but don't let sin control your life here on earth. Why, how can you do that? Because it's the spirit inside of you saying, you know, Warren, you're no longer that person. That no longer has power over you. Surrender that, continue surrendering that. Mm, yeah. You must not be ruled by the things your sinful self makes you want to do. Mm. You know, humility, this is a prime, it takes humility to say, I can't do this anymore. Hmm. Not build on that. Not. It's like, no, I've been set free from that. Lord, and, and this is what I like. The Bible in other places says to pray without ceasing, without stopping. So you're walking along, you're tempted to go down the path, the old pathway of sin. And you said, no, that's not of you, Lord. Your word says this. Hmm. You know, that is key for me as we've walked the road, you know, and you, there's things in your life that you're going to be tempted with. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to know that the devil is not all-knowing, all-omnipresent, uh, but he knows where those chinks in your armor are at, mm -hmm. where he can poke his finger and say, oh, you want this more, mm -hmm. the sin that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And he says, don't use your body to do evil, but offer yourselves to God. You know, one of the things that I love to talk about when I'm sharing Christ is the importance of the enslavery that we once had in our sin nature. We were enslaved to do what that sin wanted us to do. Mm -hmm. 
and it talks about here in, in the latter verses that we have been set free from that. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? If we're set free, like you said, you put on the shackles, you went back into that prison door or cell, but the door's wide open. Mm -hmm. Christ has set us free and we are no longer enslaved by that sin. It no longer has power over mm -hmm. us, but now it speaks of, but now we are slaves to what is right. You know, you're no longer enslaved. That's speaking of a bond servant. Yeah. Somebody that is willfully saying, mm -hmm. you're a good, good master. Yeah. You have treated me well. And now I surrender all that I am, all that I have to you. Mm -hmm. You called me to what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. You know, in the Old Testament times, that's what they would do. If you were my ma if, if I was your master and you came to me and you gave me seven years of good slavery and I treated you well, I could set you free after that seven years. But yet you would look back and say, well, you know, he blessed me in every aspect of my life. Mm -hmm. And you could come back to me and say, you know, I want to be all yours, all in, I'm yours. I'll do what you want me to do from this point on until death. Mm -hmm. I would pierce his ear and say, you're mine. That's what's amazing to me too, because as you bring that up, you know, because bond servant is the one who freely and willfully gives. And that's what uh, this symbolizes for me here, mm. this, this ring. Um, I mean, it's symbolized in my heart through faith, but this is um, my bond service mm. to the Lord. Um, it's not forced servitude. No. It has been freely and willfully given um, every breath, every moment, every heartbeat. It was always his. And... Um, yeah, so that always creates some some, some really yeah, deep deep stuff, thoughts, meditations, God's yes. word flooding through my heart and my mind as I'm sharing right now of what that brings to the it, it's always there, folks. Mm. You know, and yeah. I love that. But sh you know, he says that surely you know. Mm -hmm. You know, to me as a believer now, he's speaking to Paul is speaking to the Roman church. And he says, surely you know that you become the slaves of whatever you give yourself to. Mm -hmm. yep. I have one question tonight. What are you giving yourself to? Are you surrendering yourselves to sin or to obeying God? Mm -hmm. You can do either one. Mm -hmm. But one road is going to be a rough road. It's going to be a hard road that is hard to, to hold on to. Mm -hmm. The other one? God wants to bless you. He wants to help you. Mm -hmm. And when you surrender your life to Christ, he'll do amazing things with it. More than you can ever fathom. Oh, when I God. came here, <laughs> I was just seeking help for trying to keep my marriage together, trying to keep my family whole. Mm -hmm. And now to see what he's doing in my family, mm -hmm. through my own kids, that I thought, mm -hmm. man, will they ever learn it? And yet, to see them loving the Lord. Yeah. Wow, yeah, we're all works in progress. And me, you know, I always stumble on that. We're works in progress. Mm -hmm. But think about it. You know, it's our choice. We can accept that free gift hour by hour, minute by minute, day by day, and say, Lord, I'm all yours. Or we can quench the spirit, say, hey, you hush that. I want to do what I want to do. And it brings, what, consequences. Mm -hmm. And yeah. sometimes those consequences in the worldly view last for a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, my brother Matt here can talk about it. I can mm -hmm. talk about it. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys can too. But this is what we want you to know. Today is the day to be made right, to surrender those to our Heavenly Father. I mean, we need to keep going here, but I mean, we could... We could speak just on that for days. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you want to kick off the top there? You want oh, me yeah. to? Yeah, either way. Okay, humility is recognizing who you are in light of who God is. Having a correct view of self allows you to stay away from pride and away from the heartache of what your self-led life brings. Mm -hmm. Being humble brings God's blessings, even in the midst of consequences. Mm -hmm. Here's the truth. If God does allow circumstances, yeah, 
if God does allow circumstances to humble you, he is right there to receive you when you repent. And that is good news. Mm -hmm. The path of a victorious life starts with humbling yourself before God, saying yes to the free gift of salvation, and walking in the newness of life. His spirit produces. He will do it. The question is, will you let him? Yeah. Know this. When you look at all the great people in the Bible, mm. many of them did not start off humble. In this, there is great hope for all mankind. We can learn from the, their lives and how God interacted with them before humility and then afterwards. Mm. It's not until humility becomes a part of their walk does God start using them powerfully. Mm. Be assured that God will receive you in the same way as you admit you are powerless over the effects of self-centered behavior. Mm -hmm. And know that throughout these scriptures too, that the position of repentance is, is one of humility because it takes, it, it, it takes humility to admit our sin mm -hmm. and repent of it. And God gives us the ability to do that. Ask him to give you the ability to do it. It is a beautiful thing. Um, a repentant heart, right? And we're going to get into a scripture here in just a second in reference to King David. Yeah. After he had done some things called sin mm -hmm. uh, that ended in the loss of, I mean, many, many, many lives. Um, so his sin absolutely led to physical death of many, many, many of his mighty people. So we, there's a couple quotes before we get into that. And C.S. Lewis says this, If anyone would like to acquire humility... I can, I think, tell he or she the first steps. The first step is to realize that one is proud. Mm. Right? This, there it is. There it is. Yeah. You got to recognize Lewis. that you're proud. Yeah. Yeah. And J.C. Ryle says this. The true secret of spiritual strength is self-distrust and deep humility. Mm. Right? Yes. Self-distrust and deep humility. You know, the world wants to push, you know, self-focus, self-motivation, which is contrary to everything self -love. God's word yeah. speaks to. So we live that out. Um, and here's that scripture I was talking about. Psalm 54, excuse me, Psalm 51, 14, and 17. God, spare me from the punishment of death. My God, you are the one who saves me. Let me sing about all the good things you do for me. The sacrifice that God wants is a humble spirit. God, you will not turn away someone who comes with a humble heart and is willing to obey you. Mm. And that's so crucial uh, that we obey our Savior, that we obey the God of all creation. Um, his word speaks what that obedience looks like it's to be the doers that he called us to be the effectual yes. doers and this is after David took his mighty man Uriah's wife Bathsheba got her pregnant sent him to the front lines along with many other people and they were all killed yes. to, he did this to try and cover up his sin yep. and then he was confronted by a brother who loved him mm -hmm. right but he waited months and months and months to repent of his sin and he lived out the results of that. And God humbled him, brought him to a place of humility. He's done it with me um, more times, uh, more occasions than I can recall. Yeah. Um, so today I prefer to be humble rather than humbled. Yes. Um, and uh, you see the moment, you see the results. And, and David is described as a man after God's own heart yes. because he had a repentant heart. Um, so he, made, he, he repented to God and he repented to everybody as the king, right? And uh, As the he, king. Yeah, yeah so he, he, the Lord, the, the Lord um, gave him the ability to show humility. It's a beautiful thing when humility is on display. Just like when I displayed pride, it was not beautiful mm. in any way, shape, or form. And that's how I, I'm able to share from experiential knowledge the results of it and, and I encourage you all to not gain the knowledge that I gained 
from from my prideful, arrogant, selfish behavior that I use to live out every moment, every second, every breath. But today, uh, we get to that's the right. Lord lets us. He provides us the ability to present ourselves humbly before Him by being obedient. Right. Um, which it says here in the bottom of the Psalms passage, seventeen. And then, you know, if you you, you know, I know we got we got one more quote. Yeah. Here. Not until we become humble and teachable, standing in God in awe of God's holiness and sovereignty, acknowledging our own littleness, distrusting our own thoughts, and willing to have our minds turned upside down, can divine wisdom become ours. Mm. J.I. Packer. You know, that's not scripture, but man, that is truth. Mm -hmm. We have to be turned upside down Mm -hmm. in every aspect of our life to say, Lord, I humbly come before you. I love that part with King David. Mm -hmm. You know, I brought him to a point of worship. You know, let me sing about all the good things you have done for me. Yeah. God is waiting to do good things for each and every one of you tonight. Mm -hmm. May it be set free from the sin that you've been walking in and you're a believer and you're walking in that shame and guilt. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you don't know Christ. We've opened the door to how you can be right before God tonight. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you Mm -hmm. shall be saved. Absolutely. It takes humility to even accept that. But you know what? The nice thing is, is God even does that in he, us. he provides it that's right he's drawn you tonight to hear that message yeah. what are you going to do with it choose to serve sin or surrender to god mm. it's your call mm. we'd love to hear from you if you want us to pray with you mm. um man there's people here that will get back to you throughout the day the yeah. night yeah. i mean they, they do it every time so don't be shy about it yeah. you know message us but you know we're we're about out of time, so I'm going to ask my mm-hmm. brother here to close us in prayer tonight. Yeah, and super thankful for you all, Kim, Michael, yes. Billy, Cliff, Janet, Scott, every, Debbie, everybody that's coming through tonight. We love you all. We're so thankful for you all. Let love of the brethren continue. We love because he first loved us. Absolutely. And the, and, and it's, a, it's a love that one can only know from God the Father through His Son Jesus Christ, and then He gives us the ability to share that love with everybody. So yeah, let's let's go to the Lord and thank Him. Yes, Lord, we just humbly come before You this evening. We thank You for these moments in Your Word that that we would leave here tonight that um, that You would give us the ability to put these truths into effect, Father. That we would be those who are Your children of the Word, yes. and that we would be in Your Word. And we ask this for all Your children mm-hmm. globally, all the saints, Father. Um, every portion of the globe uh, uh, God we, we just need you to do it we, yes. we need you now more than we ever have um, we are in desperate need of you this mm-hmm. second more than when we started this message tonight yes. and then in about five minutes we need you more than, than we do right now so God we trust you we love mm-hmm. you and praise you walk us into the path of obedience yes. by your strength and your power throughout every moment of this physical life to be spirit led believers mm-hmm. and for those that are just coming to know you, yes. God, mature them up, mature us all up. Yes. Lord, get us to that place of maturity while never losing childlike faith, mm-hmm. which is to believe you at your word completely. Mm-hmm. Lord, we trust you, we love you and praise you and ask it in your son Jesus Christ's precious name for your glory, God, amen. Amen. So we love you all, so thankful to have been able to share this message with you tonight. Robert, super <laughs> thankful that you're coming through. Thank yes. you for the, the, the birthday wishes, brother. Yeah. I'm here with you all on my birthday. The Lord provided me another year, which is amazing. Um, you know, because I wasn't supposed to make it past 18 based off of my activities. You know what I mean? And, uh, and my funeral plot paid for before I was 18 years wow. old. And um, so praise God. Every yes. moment truly is a gift. Every moment. And uh, yeah. And yeah. Um, Today we get to see ourselves rightly before the God of all creation and see him for who he is because he's given us the ability to obey him in his word, Mm -hmm. which is a beautiful thing. So God bless you all. We love you. Thank you so much, everybody that's spending up some happy birthdays. It truly is 
Um, it truly is. So God bless you all. We love you, and we'll talk to you soon. May the rest of your evening be filled with peace and joy from yes. God the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. Talk to you soon.